Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, Daughter of Increase. My name is Nisa Nisa, nice, for those of you who are new to the channel, or who just happen to stumble across this video, and I post new videos every Tuesday and Thursday, all about my faith, God, Christ, and expanding the kingdom of God. Today's video is, it was going to be a book review, but um, I decided to come on and talk to you guys about how I annotate in my books, and basically show you guys how I do that. So, um, recently I read A Light on the Hill, Right, yeah, A Light on the Hill by Connie Lynn Cassette. This is the first book in the Cities of Refuge saga. And I tabbed it up. I raved about it on Instagram if you haven't known, if you didn't see my Instagram post. Um, and I, I don't know if you guys can see, I kind of like mark in my books. It's kind of hard for you to see. Let me see if I can find a page. So, like, I underline and I mark. I also write. I'm trying to find a page where I actually have some writing on it. Here's another page of underlining. So like I underline, I write in the margins of my books. Um, I really like to interact with the story as I'm reading it. So I just finished this and I'm currently reading the sequel, which I do have in my cute little uh, book sleeve. I purchased these book sleeves, um, I purchased two of these a while ago. Um, not a while ago, probably like a week ago. And I got them from a shop called Book Gizmo on Etsy. She actually has two, like, Christian-based book sleeves, um, that I really want to get. So, I'm thinking about getting those. But right now I have this one, which is called the Unicorn Forest. It's so pretty. I'll show you guys up close the design. It's really, really pretty and girly, and I love it so much. But, um, yeah, I'm reading the sequel right now, which is Shelter of the Most High. This is the second book in the Cities of Refuge saga. And I'm tabbing it up, as you can see. Lots of lots of tabs. Um, again, writing in the book. Um, where else? Underlining nonstop in the book. So I do write in my books, right? And put this back and I'm going to show you guys the tools that I use and then I'm going to flip the camera around and show you guys how I do it as I read so um I have this pouch I got this pouch for my fiance he went to Marshall's I think and got me like this big gift box set that came with like a notebook this canvas pouch it came with two tins of tea and pencils and things like that and pens but um I was going to use it as a makeup bag but right now I'm using it as to store my utensils in here so the first thing I have in here is a bookmark um, just cardstock paper really but I have a bunch of these that I get from Baker books um, when they send me the books for review they send these which are basically like quick reminders of like where to do your reviews how long you have to do your reviews and how to submit it to the website um, so that they know but I use these basically to make straight lines you can see all the little mess up on there I use that to make straight lines right then I use a blue pen to write. So right now I'm just using this um, crown pen. This is a 0.7 millimeter pen. You guys know how I feel about my 0.7s and my 0.5s. I like these pens. So I use a blue pen to write in the margin because I feel like black is too stark and sometimes um, it messes with my eyes when I'm reading the text in black and then reading my notes in black. So that's that. Um, and then I've been using the Sharpie art pens, which look like this in them. There are regular Sharpie pens, and then there are Sharpie art pens. I specifically use the art pens, though. I think they're both the same kind of ordeal. Um, I do have Sharpie pens. Let me see if I can find. I don't think I have one on me. Nope. I'm going to have to grab my other pouch. Oh, it's right here. So, with my biblical fiction, um, I use the Sharpie art pens, which look like this. And I have... A variety of colors and I'm gonna go through my colors for you guys so the pouch is empty right and then I have another pouch here but um, let me grab my color code system so I can run through the colors with you guys so I'm not really up to par with it um, off the top of my head so I use the red color to underline character names or any character traits um, especially concerning like the main characters or uh, characters that will be visited in other stories or other books within like series so that's what I use the red for I use the red for character traits and character names what was the next color I use orange next for anything that's important to the plot so um, plot points key points plot twists I use orange to keep up with that 
pink is anything romance related whether they're in a relationship or not if it's sweet and lovely um between a guy and a female here we go um yellow i use for the funny moments and there are qu a few funny moments in this book a few funny ones so i feel like yellow is just very bright and happy go lucky so i use yellow for that blue is for the sad moments that make me want to cry <laughs> Green are for any memorable quotes that I want to remember. And then we get into these three colors, which differ. So purple are for scriptures. Um, anything related to a scripture, whether it's a scripture written in the text or um, it's talking about a scripture but doesn't mention the scripture, I use this purple to underline it. This coral color here, it's not orange, it's coral. Definitely coral. Um, if you guys can see the difference between these two. This is the orange, this is the coral. So the coral I use to underline anything in the book that's like a prayer that I personally want to remember for myself to pray, I use that. And then brown are for like the questions or personal things, like personal thoughts within the text, if that makes sense. Like if the character is thinking a question and I feel like it pertains to something that I thought myself, I use brown. So that's what I use it for, those colors. Um, I do have this little thing that I keep with me just to keep organized. Um, and to go with that, I keep tabs and post-it notes. So I use a variety of things. So right here I have post-it notes. Um, just two different things with post-it notes. And I use them when I want to do extra research. And I'll explain. Here, if you guys can see on this page, um, I underlined the things about the great goddess of Ashtoreth and about um, Baal. So I underlined that stuff, and then I wanted to really understand who these people, like who these gods and goddesses were. So I did more research and found scripture texts. So that's basically what I wrote on the actual sticky note, um, just because I didn't want to like write it all in the book. So I just put it on a sticky note. Then I have tabs galore because I like tabs. I mean, I, I have all types of tabs, expensive, inexpensive, Dollar Tree tabs, so... I got post-it tabs here, which it comes with an orange, the orange is gone. Um, these tabs here are Dollar Tree tabs. These are Dollar Tree, and these are like my discount store tabs. So like I have tabs everywhere, and then I got these set of tabs um, from Amazon in like a huge humongous pack so like they came with tabs that look like that they came with the really skinny ones and then you have your regular tabs and your arrow tabs so I have those and um that's just to tab up the actual story I also have a little pouch section here in which I keep my other annotating keys so I do have a regular annotating key for when I'm reading like my regular regular fictional books so that's that key for that and then I have one for my nook because I do read ebooks. I have one for my Kindle. I have one for my other e reading app. So, like, I keep those in here. Um, and then I just keep an index card just to scratch on. But that is that. So, what I'm going to do now, I'm actually going to leave a link to where you can get all of these from on Amazon just for those who really want to get into it. But what I'm going to do now is turn the camera around and I'm going to dive back into reading. Shelter of the Most High. I am, I think I stopped in the middle. Oh no, I stopped at chapter 14. So what I'm going to do is, I'm actually going to speed up the um, the video footage for the next part. Just because I don't know if it's illegal to read it like that on camera. I don't know, but I want to show you guys like how I mark and annotate in my biblical fiction books. I'll do a separate video on like my Christian nonfiction just because I have a separate kind of annotating setup for that and a separate pouch with my utensils for that. So we're we're gonna dive into chapter 14 which I'm so excited to get into. So I'm going to now flip the camera around and show you guys how I read. Okay guys so now I'm at one of my mini tables that I have in my room. So the first thing I'm gonna have is a drink obviously. Um today it's just gonna be a crush. I'm thirsty and I want to crush soda. Let me get this to autofocus but I want to crush then I take a pen holder just to have all my pens out. 
my cell phone holder, which I use this um, specifically to keep up the index card that has my color code. Because sometimes I forget what the colors mean. So we have that. We obviously will need the book. So I have the book here. In the pouch. My annotating bag, which is here. So taking everything out. There we go. Gonna take out post its the actual color code. I'm gonna stick it here. And yes, I know this might seem like a lot to some people, but yeah, I like to make sure I'm you know on points. And I take out whatever tabs I'm currently using at the moment. So I just take those out. I'm gonna put these two back in the bag. And because this one is starting to get all beat up if you guys can see like the marks i'm going to toss that one because as i said i have a bunch of these and just get a fresh one out so i have that so i'm going to take the book out i'm going to move these little pouches to the side the other thing i i forgot to mention in the video that i use is a bible um right now i'm going to use a devotional bible for women um, in the King James Version, this is from Ellie Claire. It's not going to focus, is it? Ellie Claire. Yep, there we go. And, um, yeah, I told you guys before that this was my prayer Bible. Like, I have the color code key in here and everything. But I'm thinking of using this with reading my, um, books because I have my other prayer Bible. So, we'll see. But right now I'm going to use this one. I just have it just in case. So... I'm just going to sit down. I'm going to put my sticky notes to the side. Let's try to get this camera fixed. So I'm like hitting it as I sit and read. Okay. Post-its over here. And aren't these like so cute? I just, I like floral post-its. Really cute. So, yep. Getting everything in order. Situated. And, Okay. So, as I said, I am on, oops, sorry, that was a chair, chapter 14. So, I'm going to zoom in and show you guys how I do my reading. So, this part will be sped up. I'll walk through once I am done with this portion to just tell you guys what I marked up and whatnot. So,
Okay, guys. So, as you can see, I finished reading chapter 14. Um, and I just used basically pink, orange, yellow, and a blue. So, there was a cute little romance scene here. Like, cute, lovely, dovey kind of thing. Where, um, Sophia started to allow her feelings for, um, Eitan, you know, flow, if you will. So, that, that was cute. Um, this whole thing here was funny because it's about her and how she, like, tries to sneak around to hear him and, um, things like that. And how she, like, stared at him when he was training and wrestling, so I thought that was funny. Um, I did this in red because this is all about Etienne as a kid. That's a character trait, and there's not much mentioned about him in the first book. So I definitely have to do a lot more, like, underlining in red for him in this book. Um, blue because this was sad about her missing home and her family being dead. And we have more romance here because uh, Etienne, fi A10, oh my god, I always want to say Etienne, but A10 finally is speaking to her about a possibility with the two of them, like he's kind of inching it in. I didn't really have a color for this, so I like underlined it and then said yes, silly goose. I also put finally because he's finally allowing himself to kind of see where it will go with them two, and yes, silly goose, because you know, she knows. That what he's saying but she kind of like don't know so it was one of those moments and then here um raviv is a very important character from the first book um so you have to read the first book to really understand it um but yeah he's back and i don't like him because i will say that he is the ex-betrothed of mariah <laughs> and the guy that mariah is with is related to this guy so, yeah, I said, no, stay away from my buttercup. I call her buttercup just because she was so sweet. But, um, yeah, so I'll briefly, like, flip through and show you guys anything that I oh, set up underlined. So far, it's a lot of yellow, orange, and blue. You see lots of yellow. I mean, orange, some blue here, some yellow. Um, sometimes I'll have, I, I, I didn't want to underline all that, so I just kind of, like, bracketed it. There's more yellow, lol, just because Baz is funny. Baz was funny from, like, the first book, but he's a lot more comical in this one. More yellow and some orange. Like, sometimes I don't put a post-it for the colors, just because I don't feel like it's, you know, essential. But, um, I do put a post-it when it's essential and, um, when it's not just a plot point, but I feel like it's something I need to remember when I do my review. Here's something else that I underlined but didn't post. Um, more writing, more writing here funny parts so you know this is how I do my reading okay guys I hope this video was helpful um, I hope you guys got to see how I really read my books and annotate and again this is just for when I'm reading Christian fiction or my biblical fiction stories this has nothing to do with me reading my like Christian nonfiction self-help books I do have a separate pouch for all of my annotating stuff for that. So if you guys are interested in watching a video on that. Definitely let me know. I can do that type of video for you guys. But this one is just on when I'm reading biblical fiction. Because I like to interact with the text of a story. Um, I've always been the type to write in my books. That's just me. And then of course when you get to high school and college. They always have you in, you know, annotating in your books and your stories and your textbooks and stuff. So I've just grown to love writing and annotating in the text of a book and it makes the experience more personal and more real because as I am feeling emotions I can write them out as I am thinking things that time that I'm reading them I can write them out and I can always go back down the line and you know see where I was when I was reading that or if that you know if that quote is still important to me because I do annotate in different ways um but yeah that is it so I'm gonna have everything Link down below on Amazon for the two books, A Light on the Hill, as well as Shelter of the Most High, which definitely, definitely, definitely get your hands on. I will do a review on um, A Light on the Hill and Shelter of the Most High once I am done reading it. I am at chapter 15 now, obviously, but, you know, I still have a good amount of way to go. So once I finish this gorgeous beauty, I will review them both side by side, side by side, review them both together. But um, the links to these will be down below. I will find a link to this that I got from Book Gizmo, the book sleeve, um, and the unicorn horse. You can literally type in unicorn book sleeve on Etsy, and um, a lot of different people sell it. The person that I got mine from actually lives in Texas, I believe, and I only paid $15 for this. 
Um, so it was a really good price and the shipping was like two or three bucks. It was really good and you got priority mail shipping. So I will find a link and if I can't find a link to the specific one, I'll just link her shop down below. Um, I will leave links to where you can get the pins as well as the tabs because I got the tabs in like a really big, I don't even know, it was like a bag and they said it was over 500 plus tabs together. So I'll leave all the links down below, you can check those out. So that is pretty much it for this video and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!